Hi, Tyler Stallman. Now, I think most people at this point realize that Final Cut Pro is really fast and generally pretty easy to use, but I think it's led to this common misconception that it's only for simple projects. If you want something more complicated, you've got to use more complicated software, and I'm here to bust that myth just a little bit. We're gonna go into some slightly more advanced tips and tricks. So if you're already familiar with Final Cut, this will take you a step further, and if you don't know the basics yet, I got a playlist all about that. Let's get started. First off, speed ramps. So this is a pretty common thing these days where you just suddenly speed up footage. And in this drone shot, you can see that we have like a lot of motion at the beginning when we're flying over Anya here, but then gradually it just goes into the same thing for a while. So what I want to happen is that all of a sudden it ramps up and this part plays really quickly. The way I used to do this the wrong way is that you might cut something here, click on it, and then go to this little speed tool and you could say fast and then it may play, plays it 20 times and that would you know, give us our basic effect where suddenly it speeds up. But there is a much better way. So first we're going to find the moment in the video we want to transition and you know traditionally you might press command B which would cut it and then you could select each side of the clip, change those, but instead we're going to press shift B and it's sort of like a blade tool that only affects the speed. And now we can go to the drop down and say this is going to be 20 times faster and we can make the speed ramp more gradual. Now let's play it. All right, that's just about what I wanted. Now I'm going to make a few tweaks here. First of all, I want to ramp into the speed up a little more so it's more gradual. And then also I got the point slightly wrong. That's not where I want it to happen. I want it to happen just as her head disappears. So what I can do instead is double click on this transition point, edit the source frame, and just move it over until it's exactly where I want it. And there we go. I got a nice clean speed ramp all contained within one clip. Here's another tip. If you want to customize your commands, I'd recommend giving something to a commonly used speed ramp. So I'm going to search for speed and I'm going to look for fast eight times and I give that shift eight as the shortcut. And now if I select a clip, that will instantly jump it down to being that speed. So if you're somebody like me that speed ramps all the time, you can do it really quickly. I've also got a handy shortcut I've been using a lot for transitions. So a visual transition, I could select between two clips and press command T and it will add the default, which is just a basic dissolve from one clip to another. I don't use dissolve transitions very often. So I can actually go in and one that I do use a bit is slide. So I can right click it and say make default. Now if I press command T, this is my new default transition. I would not use it like that, but I, I do use it especially for screen recordings. But I can tell you're still not excited because you are a classy editor and you wouldn't use a cheesy transition like that. So we're going to jump over to another kind of video. This is where there's a lot more speaking and A roll. And what I do use all the time is I'd select two clips instead of command, press option T. And that gives me, if I zoom way in here, a very subtle audio transition so that it blends smoothly from one clip to the other. You can modify that if you want, make it shorter, but this is extremely helpful for talking head videos or especially things like podcasts where you want to blend together a cut so you can't hear the cut. I use option T all the time. But there's another way to fix those cheesy transitions. You could go get some nice transitions. So Motion VFX, sponsor of this video, has some beautiful ones. So over here, I've got some already installed in my M Film Mat. These are some film transitions. I'm just gonna like drop a few on. Let's watch them back to back. Oh. What else we got? Ooh, a film burn. Nice. And if it's not exactly to your liking, there's a lot of different controls you can change about it. So maybe let's crank up the saturation of those light leaks. Maybe you wanna turn off the scratches, change the way that the blur is visible, and let's take a look. Cool, but that's just one of so many things the motion VFX can do. I wanna show you some more of the film emulation stuff because I really like it. So if I go into my effects, we'll take a look at M16 millimeter, and this is basically just film emulation, full vintage vibes. And I'm just gonna put a different one on each clip. Let's like watch them all back to back. So now I've taken my drone home videos and hyper stylized them in just a few seconds. And like I say, this is just the drag and drop version, but you can get in there and customize it all you want. And there's a whole bunch of motion VFX stuff that I've been using in my videos for over five years now. You've seen them before. Here, this is a good example. This arrow, this humble, simple arrow has shown up so many times. And the reason I like it is because I can really customize it. So I can turn off these rough edges, which usually I do, and I can move it around and kind of create different shapes with it. So it can be curving this way, and then I rotate it. Now it's pointing over here. Then I gotta move the whole thing over here, and I can make it yellow, and I can make it thicker. All this flexibility means that this one arrow plugin I've used over and over, and it animates into place, and it can animate out, but it's just a really versatile tool that I keep coming back to. 
Motion VFX loves Final Cut almost as much as I do. They have a team of highly skilled in-house developers that are constantly working on infinite different plugins that do everything you can imagine. Some of them are clean and simple titles used by tons of your favorite YouTubers. Some are professional and corporate style so you can use them for your clients. And like the film emulation I was showing you, some of it is just super stylish and meant to make your video look cool. So whatever project you're working on in Final Cut, Motion VFX will have something for you. Check out the link in the description. Thanks to Motion VFX. Let's keep going. And for this next tip, I'm gonna use some of their cinematic titles. Let's try an unexpected letter, okay. So this title here is using some fonts by default. Let's check out what they are. It's something called Lato Light. Now I have a YouTube channel and if you have any sort of channel or client you continually work for, I highly recommend that you go into your fonts and choose whatever their standard font is and make it into a preset. So now I just click and instantly it's using my brand of font, which is the one that I always use. This video is not about an unexpected letter. It's about an unexpected final cut tutorial. So this can come in handy all the time. Let's start again. I'm going to actually delete that one and use a default title. There's a shortcut for that. It is Control T. We're using every single T shortcut today. And there you go. By default, there's just text in the middle of the screen. I'm going to change what it says. Now my font is Bebas Noya. Bebas Noya. I'm going to select, I don't know, what's kind of a common beginning font size. And there's other parameters here. You can do a default color. I mean, Maybe I'll make one for yellow because I, I do use that specific color of yellow pretty often. Uh, I usually have a little bit of higher tracking, let's say four. And now up here, I want to save all formats and appearance attributes. I'm gonna name it, how about yellow babass? And there it is. It is stored along with all the others that I regularly go to. In all my Final Cut videos, I think one of the most useful tips is always showing you to put all of your A-roll into one compound clip. So now I'm gonna take that another step further. So here I've got a whole bunch of stuff that is all A-roll. And as usual, I'll press Option G and now it is inside of a compound clip. So if I make some edits and I go inside the clip and do something to all of them, like let's say add one of my transform LUTs, uh, this one's C-Log2, all of a sudden everything looks great all throughout and then I go back to my edits and it's there. Now that was just one example of the power of a compound clip. I'll show you another way I use it. So here's some A-roll of me talking, blah, blah, blah. If I make the timeline bigger, I can see there's something going on here. This. This is noise. This is just background ambient like hiss or, or whatever. Let's listen to it. It's just ambient room tone. It's in every audio file, but I like to clean it up as much as possible. So here's how I do it. The only way I've found that really preserves all the audio quality. Now I'm sure somebody will point out this is built into Final Cut. You can click noise removal. This does not sound very good. You can hear it processing the spoken word and I don't recommend using it. First up, we're gonna press Option G, turn this into a compound clip, and then go inside it. Now I need to create a WAV file, and this is because I need to do some of this processing externally. None of it can be done in real time well enough in Final Cut, so I do need to use outside tools. So I'm gonna right click, reveal this clip in the browser, now I'm gonna reveal it in my Finder, and there it is. Then I open up Compressor, which is the sister software to Final Cut Pro, drag that clip into Compressor, I go to my audio formats, select wave, drag it to the clip, and hit start batch. Now you don't have to use compressor to do this. Anything that'll take a video file and extract a high quality wave file from it will do the same thing. And now you can take that wave and use any professional audio software you have and do a high quality pass of noise removal. I like isotope, so I open up RX8. Let's zoom into an area that is nothing but noise. That is the uh, orange part, if you can't tell there. I'm gonna go to voice denoise, and importantly, click learn. This is the difference, is live processing is much harder, and if you learn a section of the existing noise and then remove it from everything else, it sounds so much better. My reduction amount usually is between like eight and maybe 12, let's go to 10. And you can see the before and after, that orange, the noise is really cleaned up. Let's hear before and after. So before. And after. Now there's all sorts of different types of noise removal that I can do, but again, always learning it and rendering it into the file has higher quality. It's like video game graphics compared to pre-rendered. You can always pre-render at a higher quality level. Great, now I just save that wave file. All right, now we're back in Final Cut. I'm just gonna grab that wave, drag it into my compound clip, 
make sure that it aligns with the beginning, mute the original. So now the audio is coming from the WAV file instead of from the video file. And when I go back to my timeline, it just looks like a normal clip. I can't really tell what happened. This can also speed up Final Cut because if you have a bunch of different audio filters running in real time, it can slow down your software. But let's look at another way that compound clips can help and that's with multi-track. So let's open up the multicam and this has three different angles. The first one is just me talking. The next one is my screen recording. And after that is both and they need to be in sync here and they need to follow through with any changes I make. For example, if I change the color grading on me, it needs to show up in the A-roll and in the mixed A-roll and screen recording angle. So I'll show you how to do it. This clip and this one are both already compound clips because that's what we do here. Then I'll create a new angle, I'll call it both clips, I don't know. Copy my screen recording, line it up with the beginning because they have to be in sync and select both clips and paste it in there. All right, now we're gonna need to go deeper an extra level of nesting. So I'm gonna select that and create a new compound clip out, but I'm gonna call it both again. And then I'm gonna select my A-roll, go inside that both compound clip, paste my A-roll, and now I have both of them in sync on one angle and all I have to do is lay them out. So I don't know, I could do things like make it smaller. Uh, maybe here, I'll do the simplest version. I'll just put me in the corner. And that's something you can do for, you know, basic uh, tutorial videos. I'm gonna crop the left, crop the right, and good enough for now. Now, if you're not already impressed by compound clips, there's one more thing you can do with it. And I do it at the end of most videos. So as we're watching, you can keep an eye on the right here and see our levels. They're actually, they're actually pretty good. I mastered this pretty well. But often you'll find an imbalance between your levels. Let's say you're mixing different sources and some of them are turned down using the volume slider and they're not completely even between them. You do the best you can, but at the end, I go and I say Command A, select all of my clips, and then again, press Option G, which creates a compound clip. I call it Audio Master, and now there's just one track for everything. If I double click it, it's like my regular video edit. It's all inside of there. But if I go back, I have one compound clip with everything. And on top of that, I can add a limiter, which is usually what I do just to kind of boost the volume. I turn up the gain a bit. And the nice thing about a limiter instead of just using volume is that there is a limit on the output. So if I start playing it here, if I turn this up too high, you can see it never clips, it never hits the red. If I turned up the output level eventually, it could start clipping. We don't want it to clip. So basically a limiter is a more or less safe way to increase your volume. You can't go too far with it, but it does help you get more of a consistent output. And it's all thanks to these compound clips. Now my final tip, this is for the YouTubers out there. It was in the podcast recently, but I think I haven't had it in any of my Final Cut tutorials. It comes from Patrick Tommaso. I had him on the show, so of course he gave it to us, but it's very simple. When you're uploading video, go to Share, Export File. And if you're like me, most of the time I select Video and Audio and I go with H.264. It creates a big, beefy H.264 file that looks really good and is you know good to hold on to. I'd rather archive that than what we're about to do. But instead, you go to Format, Apple devices, make sure that you're in your full resolution. I usually use better quality and code. And if you use these export settings, your processing time on YouTube can be cut from several hours down to several minutes. It's actually like magic. I have no idea why it does this, but it completely changes how long you can wait for your video to be done. So I sure hope something in this video was helpful and I hope you go check out Motion VFX. Again, link is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.